Okay, so we're going to start by learning how to activate how to activate B lymphocytes. Oh no, I'm sorry, wrong one. We're going to start actually by learning how to activate T lymphocytes. Okay, and I'm going to ah uh, my video like over here. So remember, we're in the lymph node. If you didn't watch that other video, we're in the lymph node here. Our virus has entered the lymph node. And now what you have to remember is in the lymph node, we have these double population of T cells, okay? One is a CD4 cell and one is a CD8 cell, but let's not worry so much about that. <clears throat> I want you guys to understand a couple of things here. Why are there two different populations? Because those two different populations create two different types or really four different types of T cells. And each T cell does something different. You have to activate both those populations. Okay, why do I have so many blue ones? Well, I want you to understand these are mature T cells. So they, they were matured by the thymus gland. They came into the lymph node. The T cells have receptors on their surface. And remember, this is not like an antibody receptor. It's just a straight receptor, but it also has a variable region. So what that means is the variable region has different shapes and, and accepts different shapes. Okay. This is, uh, this is on purpose so that you can adhere different antigens here and activate uh, a T cell with different antigens. Okay. So you're going to see that like I have one triangular shaped one, maybe I have one rounded one, maybe I have like one square one and they fit multiple shapes in there. So basically as soon as your antigen comes in, whoops, that's not how this works. As soon as your antigen hits the um, variable region, it morphs to that ver to that antigen, and now it has a configuration that is specific. And that's that um, single specificity that we have for antibodies. Okay. So when um, sorry when the when the pathogen enters the lymph node. One of the first things that's going to happen is it's going to be phagocytized or basically eaten by an antigen presenting cell. I'm just going to abbreviate that. This antigen presenting cell is oftentimes a macrophage. And so essentially what happens is, is this macrophage eats the virus. It will break it down and, and take part of the surface antigen and what it does is it presents, wow, that was off. It presents that surface antigen on, it, it presents that antigen on its surface like that, okay? And the point of this is that now these two things can actually bind together like that. So that means this population of cells, this, whatever this was, CD4, CD8, and this population of cells also has to be activated by an antigen presenting cell presenting its antigen. Okay, this is how activation has to happen. You don't just have the antigen hit the T cell. It has to hit the T cell using an antigen presenting cell. As soon as the antigen presenting cell is presented to the T cell, then what it's gonna do is start to go through proliferation and differentiation. M mostly what that means is you divide the cells and you specialize them, okay? So we're gonna see that this T cell is gonna divide here and it becomes memory T cells. And it also is going to become helper T cells. So now these T cells are activated. Essentially what you have to think about is yes, on their surface, they have the same receptor that recognizes that antigen. Okay, that's the whole point of like proliferating or different and differentiating these cells. The same thing with this one over here is as soon as you activate it like that, it's going to have specific receptors on its surface for the one that you activate it. Basically, if you activate this T cell with a specific receptor, when you multiply it through mitosis, you're going to create memory cells. 
here that have that rec can recognize that antigen and then you also create cytotoxic T cells. There is another one, it's called a repressor T cell. Oh, I'm sorry, I keep saying repressor, it's a regulatory T cell. I kind of just ignored this in class because it just regulates what's happening. Sometimes they're called suppressor T cells, okay? But I'm gonna draw those. So what this means is you're gonna create memory cells for your helper T cells, and you can create memory cells for your cytotoxic T cells that recognize that one specific antigen, okay? What helper T cells are going to do is they help activate other white blood cells. Things like B cells. So that's why I had to do this first so that you can pull that and push, put, it, put it on to the next activation. You can actually activate cytotoxic T cells. That's what this little C is for. You can um, help to activate regulatory T cells, uh, something called natural killer cells, macrophages. Helper T cells are really important for making sure everything gets moving and started doing what it needs to do to clear out the uh, foreign invader. What cytotoxic T cells are going to do is they're going to look for infected body cells. So remember what happens is this virus is going to bring its DNA right, as it, as it binds, it's going to push its DNA, sorry, that's my DNA, into this body cell. And usually as a result of that, this body cell will start to um, initiate a change in its own um, proteins on the surface of the cell. So usually what happens is then the cytotoxic T cells are roaming around looking for that antigen. And when they find it, they're going to bind to it. Okay, so this is my cytotoxic T cell. The cytotoxic T cell is going to release a chemical called perforin. What perforin does is it's going to basically create holes in, the, in this body cell. It's like gonna poke holes in this body cell. And again, because you have so much interstitial fluid, that fluid enters into the cell and it's gonna cause this infected cell to explode. Hopefully that cell explodes before it makes any viruses. But even if it, even if it may, has already made some of the virus and it, the virus gets put together again, we have you know another system to get rid of all those viruses exploding, okay? So you're gonna keep this T cell activation for B cell activation and also for understanding how vaccines work, okay? okay.